Hi, Dana here. Welcome to Solar and Create. Please subscribe to my channel and help it grow. Today's project is another one in the series of Christmas in July. They make great gifts, and today's project is perfect. It's a grocery bag holder. The grocery bags are in the bottom so you can pull them out and then you can stick them back in and fill it from the top. It has a ribbon hanger and hangs anywhere you want to keep your grocery bags. So let's get started. For today's project, the grocery bag holder, you only need a few supplies. You need a piece of fabric that is 18 by 22 inches so it's perfect for a fat quarter, an eight and a half inch piece of half inch elastic and an 18 inch piece of ribbon or trim. I'm using this small trim but you can use up to a half inch piece of ribbon. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to unfold our fabric and we're going to find our long side. Then we're going to take and we're going to run a seam down our long side that is a very narrow seam or a narrow hem. It's about a quarter of an inch or less. So we're going to clip that all the way down and when we go to the machine we're going to put a narrow hem on this long edge then we're going to turn it around and put a narrow hem on our other long edge. So let's go to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're going to stitch this narrow hem. So I'm going to remove my first clip and I'm going to slide it under, lower my presser foot. I'm going to roll my needle into my fabric but it is right on that edge so when I start stitching I'm going to pull my thread tails and give them just a gentle pull so that it'll help keep that fabric from going down into the bobbin casing. Once I'm started I can just stitch all along the edge. kind of go down the center of that because it's really hard to keep it to the far uh, left side or close to the edge. So just go down the center because all we're doing is creating just a narrow hem. This will be encased inside the, the bag holder so it doesn't have to be perfect. and clip my threads. Next I'm going to flip it around and do my other side the same way. I'm going to just roll it, clip it, and stitch it. When I get that finished I'll meet you back at the mat. Now we're back at the mat and we have our long sides uh, seam just with that narrow hem. The next step is we're going to take a ruler and we're going to turn the top edge down one inch and we're going to clip it and I'm going to clip it all the way across measuring as I go. This will create the channel at one end for our ribbon and the other end for our elastic. So we're just going to clip all the way down. We're going to do the same thing on the other end and when we go to the machine we're just going to stitch right across here to create that channel where our elastic will go and our ribbon will go. So let's go to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're going to just stitch this casing for our elastic or our ribbon. And what we want to do is we want to get as close to this edge as possible. So I line it up in my machine using the inside edge of my left side of my foot as my guide to go right down this edge and it makes the perfect seam. Pulling my clips off as I go, I'm going to go all the way down. And a 
again, I'm just keeping that edge inside edge of that foot next to the edge of the of the casing. This casing will be gathered up with either your elastic or your ribbon. So if it's your seam is a little wiggly, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. All the way to the end. And I'm going to do a little back stitch at the end to secure it. Clip my threads. And as you can see, that hem is right close to that edge using that inside edge of your foot. I'm going to flip it around and do the other end and I'll meet you back at the mat. Now we've created our channel at each end. I've got one at the top and one at the bottom. So the next step is to take and put your right sides together on the long side of your bag holder. And we're going to use our red and green clips to remind us where to start and stop stitching. We're going to start at the bottom of the top channel leaving this part open. So I'm going to put my green clip here and this we're not going to stitch above this because I want this left open. Then we're going to put our red clip at the other end just below this casing. Again, I don't want to stitch across this because I want this casing part left open. So I'm going to clip it all the way down, lining up my edges. And when I go to the machine, I'm going to start at my green clip and I'm going to stitch this seam all the way down and stopping at my red clip, making sure that these are left loose. So let's go to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're going to stitch this seam along the back of our bag holder. And remember we're going to start here at our green clip. So I'm going to remove my green clip and I want to place my presser foot so that this part is loose. Roll my needle down and I'm going to take a stitch and then I'm going to back stitch so it secures that really well. And I'm going to go all the way down. Get my edges lined up nicely. to my red clip and I'm going to remove it and I'm going to stop my stitching right at the base of my casing so that this part is left loose. And again I'm going to back stitch making sure that is secure. I'm going to clip my threads. We'll go back to the mat and I'll show you the last steps or couple of steps. Now we're ready to add our elastic to our bag holder. So we're going to take our half inch elastic and pick one end or the other. If you have a, direct, a directional fabric that goes one way, you want to make sure that you put the elastic at the bottom, not the top. So I'm going to take my large safety pin. I'm going to feed it through one end of my elastic. And this will be my needle to thread it through this casing. So you're going to put your safety pin in, get your elastic started in the channel. Sometimes it's a little tricky. And then we're going to do what I call the inchworm method. So I'm going to, my pin is inside, I'm going to push my fabric onto my safety pin and inch it up and then pull it from the back. The one thing you want to make sure is that you hold on to this tail of your elastic as you're inching it through. If you don't, 
you're liable to pull it all the way through and then you'll have to start again. So hold that with one hand, inch it up, and gather it. It's a little tricky, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. And we just want that elastic to come out at the other end. So now I have my elastic out on both sides. This is the side I entered and this is the side I came out. I'm going to remove my safety pin and when we go to the machine we're going to stitch our elastic straight across here creating a seam and then we'll fold this elastic flat inside the casing. So I'm going to put a little clip right here to hold it making sure that my elastic is not twisted inside my casing. So make sure it's all laying flat and then when we go to the machine we're going to just stitch right across here. So let's go to the machine. Now we're at the machine and we're just going to stitch right across the end of our elastic. So I like to put my elastic and do the width of my presser foot as my seam allowance. You're going to roll your needle down into your elastic and you're going to stitch across and then we're going to back stitch about three or four times to make sure that elastic is nice and secure. Back stitch, forward again, back stitch and go forward one more time and a little back stitch at the end. A nice test is to clip all your threads so they're out of your way. And then before I move on, I like to give my elastic just a little tug to make sure that it is secure. Looks pretty secure to me. So let's head back to the mat for our last steps. Now our elastic is stitched and secure. So we're just going to pull it gently and we're going to take those flaps and lay them flat. And I'm going to tuck one in one side, one in the other side, and then I can adjust my elastic so that goes in to my casing. Kind of pull it in there and that seam will just disappear into your casing. And now our elastic is nice and secure. So we're going to flip it to the top end of our bag holder and we're going to thread our ribbon or our trim. Again, I'm going to use my large safety pin. I'm going to thread it onto my ribbon and do the same inchworm method. I'm going to feed my safety pin into my channel, holding one end. I'm just going to inch it up. And again, I'm going to want to hold the end that's loose so that it doesn't feed back into itself and feed all the way through loose. I'm going to inch it up. This one is longer, so it's a little easier. Going all the way around and have my ribbon come out the other end. I'm going to remove my safety pin. Then I'm going to just take my ribbon, making sure it's nice and flat, and I'm going to tie a knot at this end. I like to tie a knot where I loop it around my finger Feed both ends through and it makes a nice little knot. Last thing we do is turn our bag holder right side out. And our bag holder is complete. It has the ribbon holder at the top where you feed the bags through and the elastic at the bottom which holds the bags inside and gently pulls them out. I hope you liked today's project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you make a bag holder, I would love for you to post your bag holder, a picture of it, in the comments. I like to see what others make from my videos. So, see you in the next one.